I wanted to talk about some E1 news. Again, I was kind of over the moon about this because I feel like I've been on my own kind of barking into the wind about E1 London and how fucking horrible it is as a club. But I've also kind of calmed my hate for it because I've also realized that unfortunately E1, I think, is like the new version of fabric for us in London or for the new kids coming up is their version of fabric. Cause when I was coming up, fabric was one of the worst clubs in London, not because of the lineups or because of the bookings, but mostly because of the crowd and the security. Sometimes you can go there, you see loads of university students, you see those people from after work, from, you know, work parties, you see music heads, you'd see caners. It's just a, too much of a strange mix of people and the layout. I fucking hate going up and down, going to up, up and down fucking stairs to go to smoking area, toilets long, queue security knocking on the door of the toilets it's just a fucking nightmare the only thing that's really good about fabric is room two and the other room up the up the stairs i think it's room three right i guess room two and room three those two rooms are fucking sick especially when they refurb room two Oof. room two sound system especially when you stand near the middle of the front is fucking phenomenal that whole place is fucking cool don't get me wrong but it's a bit of a nightmare e1 is occupying that same space but the problem with e1 well, one of the hard things to kind of wrangle in your head is that they have some of the best light lineups in london in e1 they have some of the best lineups now i'm going to prove it to you that's on the best line because just look at the fucking resident advisor listing for e1 right um just on the first of december this week on the first of december they've got an i hate models extended set alongside um, e um ekata pablo bozi i'm a big fan of um antonia de inglesias and polanski right um and then they've got a mixed mag 40th birthday party over mono is fucking playing right and if you've seen the fucking recent over mono set on fucking boiler room you're definitely going to be hyped for that one um continuing on they've got a teletech event happening on the sunday with anthea playing right alongside solomon and tekra they've got a valve sound event happening they've got a labyrinth event we don't care about that one they've got club verbo Boaten happening right if you're into those kink parties you'll know about all about club verboten and the parties that they do right fucking incredible they've got hector oaks patrick mason my guy carmen electro who i always find out mostly because of whore and fucking Boudica playing like look at these lineups in, in the next few weeks 16th the, the week after that on the 17th they've got a gw anson creature well t i don't know who these guys are i'll skip that one they've got an audio hall um night happening also They've got a percolate event happening, right? For the and again, New Year's Eve or the New Year's New Year's Eve to New Year's Day lineups is fucking incredible. They've got the first one on a Sunday. They've got a percolate 30 hour party, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Job Josie, Midland, Leon, um, Vinehall, Bonabu, Nix, Reese Spooner, a few other people. Then they've got another one happening with Job Jose, Midland, like young Marco playing. Then on the first, they've got a sixth birthday party. Dax J, Helena Half is playing. Uh, Maron, DVS One, like Ego Deaths happening, right? They've got they were they're like an up and coming um what you call it party as well in london that's doing some great things they've got some of the best lineups like again that new year's eve new year's day lineup is just maybe one of the best you're ever going to get in london for sure like that lineup is fucking stacked to say the least right you already got here um 99999 dax j devious one maron blash it and out so incredible lineup but unfortunately they also have one of these issues right as this person pointed out on the fucking techno subreddit look at this really bad experience at e1 the person writes as follows i was really looking forward to more grab event on friday for ages we traveled all the way to london for it i've never seen an event so oversold before and with zero crowd control there was like a hundred people trying to get through this one corridor at once there was serious danger of people getting crushed i saw a couple of girls crying loads of people were leaving early i saw a group of people break through a locked exit because it was impossible to get the tiny to get through the tiny main exit it's never been so difficult to leave a club before three of the six of us left within 90 minutes and the three that stayed couldn't get in the room more grab was playing in anyways update looks like there was a, been a few bad reviews on google this weekend one say that people were passing out and weren't able to be carried out of the crowd so for me this is obviously horrifying especially when you consider everything that happened at the fucking astro world concert with fucking travis scott and shit but this is definitely part of the course when it comes to e1 i've definitely noticed whenever i've gone there for a popular night and usually people only go there for really big nights anyway because again they're one of the only clubs in london that have a really good booking policy in terms of kind of booking all these i don't know the the guys on the on the come up and you come when it comes to like europe and shit who are playing all the big clubs around europe in the places that we all kind of know and love 
but they also have a good job of promoting a lot of the local promotion uh, promoters and stuff and kind of giving them a chance to kind of you know play or put on parties in a bigger sort of venue because I, i'm guessing when you combine two of the rooms that they have at e1 you're probably looking at 2000 plus right in terms of capacity so if you're a promoter that was doing stuff at fucking night tales or at fold or at venue mot that's a really good verge place to kind of step up and see the kind of um the kind of pool that you have out there so i definitely respect them for that but one thing i've noticed over the years they definitely have a tendency to oversell and it's a problem only because in london we don't have any door picking right door picking doesn't exist so when door picking doesn't exist you should only sell based on the capacity really and truly because most likely especially with the lineups that they have you're going to assume the majority of people that bought tickets they're going to arrive they're going to get there they're going to go they're going to attend even if they sold the tickets the tickets are going to be accounted for so you can't really oversell because you're going to get everybody in right you're not going to door pick anyway unless somebody's absolutely you know caning it in the fucking queue most people get in despite the fucking crazy searches and then again the fucking searches are a fucking vibe killer so you, you're you already in a queue for an oversold fucking party you're not having to queue up for let's say 20 minutes plus for a party that you already got a ticket for which is fucking annoying then you get to the fucking security place and it's like going through the airport right you have to fucking strip take out all the stuff out of your fucking pockets lift your arms up and shit take a picture of your id all these fucking crazy intrusive shit then by the time you actually go to the actual place itself the main venue the doors are annoying like heavy to kind of open and stuff there's always people coming in and out it's a narrow corridor and as soon as you get in the first thing you notice is like oh shit there's no aircon because that place is it's it, if you think fold is hot e1 is like another level it's legitimately another level if you think if you think fold is hot e1's another level at least fold if i'm not mistaken um that one air conditioning towards the front actually works so or even the one at the back actually works towards the toilet so you can actually if you want to get a breather you can get in there without going outside and go back in again but the problem with e1 is that if you are in the middle you might have to take all your clothes off because it's going to be super hot or you have to go back outside to get a fresh air and then they have one of the worst smoking areas in the world it's literally like I don't know the width of like maybe three people side to side you have to kind of stand in this weird position and then it's really packed on the corridor they've got sometimes this chill out room on the other side it's kind of okay but again that's all damp and hot and sweaty and shit and just a terrible place and I think a lot of the issues that they have will be greatly reduced if they had a bit more of a door picking policy at the front if they were able to kind of you know um send away some of the people that bought tickets that were basically you know way too far gone too drunk too high or maybe just kind of temper the crowd and make sure that they can kind of slowly but surely drip people in or for the most part just sell tickets based on the capacity and don't oversell don't be fucking greedy bastards because i guess that's what they're doing and maybe the greedy bastard thing is a bit unfair because it might just be a, a kind of an issue with the with the fact that how much you have to pay for that space right because if, if i'm not mistaken that space used to be studio spaces right and they basically redone it and renamed it or kind of you know under new management called the e1 london and it's a really i think good location when it comes to london because i think if you live in whatever part of london you live in north east south or west you can get to it fairly easy within probably i think less than 45 minutes even you know if you go there pretty late so it's pretty decent in that regard but unfortunately again because there's not a lot of places in london that are open past 4 a.m it's going to attract a big crowd they've got a really good booking policy very international a lot of the spanish italian people come out really really strongly for a lot of people that they really love and support from their kind of home country um and again you know people are going to go out and party anyway because there's not really a lot of cool places to go to that have good booking so you're going to attract a big crowd so really overselling these type of events is really not on but again it's no surprise because like i said it's one of the best and worst parties sorry on the best and worst clubs in the country i swear to god and this lineups as you're seeing here for the fucking you know up and coming parties are a good example of it um they've got a rave happening i think with fucking hell in the half i think she's actually playing if i'm not mistaken she's actually playing the entirety of let me actually double check this if i'm not mistaken let me see e1 london events i'm pretty sure she's playing a new year's day all by herself so again, Hell in the Half is one of my favorite fucking DJs anyway coming up. So imagine that being a fucking great rave to go and attend. That's fucking awesome. So she's fucking killing it and smashing it when it comes to that. So the bookings are always fucking sensational. But unfortunately, the club itself is just such a fucking nightmare. So as you can see here, as we scroll down, let me actually see the list of things for 
the rave's coming up. They've got, yeah, this, I don't even know who these people are for Aztec. This event is allegedly sold out as a tech house rave, right? Look at that. Sold out already. And this is happening, what, on the 22nd of December. You've got someone called Aaron D playing, Bobby Davis, Enigma, GW Harrison, Corin McIntosh and Creature. And again, I'll give them a lot of credit because they don't only try and play, like, I think Fold are a little bit more snobby, I guess, than E1. I think if they're not into some of the stuff people are wanting to push, they're probably not going to give them the option to put on a rave, which is for the better or the worse. But I think E1 are just, you know, they're just a space. If you can have a viable party, we'll put you on. So they're catering to the Tech House crew, to the dub crew dubstep crew bass crew techno crew house crew that they don't care the only thing i haven't seen really in e1 is disco raves or maybe housey you know non-tech housey housey type of parties you don't really see them putting on there but big up them for putting that on um and again like i said for their raves coming up there's a one is did, did i see the hell in the house or has that been cancelled is that did it get cancelled maybe it has I thought Hell in the Health was playing all night long at fucking E1. Or am I mistaken? Let me double check this. Maybe um maybe I'm fucking smoking that good bush. But I thought Hell in the Health was playing at E1. Or maybe the, they've changed it now and made it not just her by herself. Maybe it's gonna be with other people now going forward. Okay, or maybe I'm just I've just got it completely mistaken. I'm not really too sure. Let's see if I can find this. It says percolate. Okay, so so maybe it's a per maybe it is the percolate event. So if you go on Resident Advisor for New Year's Day for E1 for Sunday, the 1st of January, you do have, okay, Hell in the Half is listed on Warehouse. So maybe it is that same day all of them are playing in that year. So I guess you get high, I Hate Models, Hell in the Half, Ellen Allian, Dasha Roosh, LSDXOXO, Fadi Moham, um, Antonio D. Inglesius and Priest. Like, come on, man. This is a fucking sick lineup. Like, they really fucking smash it when it comes to these lineups. But again, the club is so fucking terrible when it comes to just having a good time and the crowd and the security <coughs> that it makes it hard to really enjoy. If anything, the sound system also, I think, is a bit overrated, personally, my own opinion. Um... I, I still think the sound system in Fold is the best in London uh, and maybe Room 2 in Fabric. They're definitely neck and neck. Uh, and maybe even Venue MOT because I just love how fucking low that fucking club is, right? It feels like a really grungy warehouse, whatever. So that's really my kind of vibe. But when it comes to just pure sound, Fold is definitely on a league of its own, right? They really fucking do a good job with that fucking space. Again, maybe it's easier to handle because it's basically one square and it's not that big. It's probably 750 capacity, right? That main room that they've got, but they fucking smash it. But again, Again, like I said, E1 is just such a fucking nightmare of a place to go to. But let's see some of the reviews from people here. Um, someone said here, sounds like a shitty promoter, same as it could be with any good club. It definitely looks like a really good place to be. The music is great too, just impossible for me and a lot of others to enjoy. The promoters definitely didn't care. I, I wouldn't say that's true. I wouldn't say it's all up to... Let, no, let me take that back. It could be true. Because I guess if your club... Verb, if you're... Um, What's that place called? The one that does a king party is called. I just can't. Is it Club Verboten? I think it's called, right? And a few others. And I think maybe even Boudicca, when they did parties there, they go out of their way to basically have their own security. They'll hire their own security or they'll pick from the security available at E1 guys who maybe get what they're about, who are comfortable dealing with the people that they're going to be kind of inviting to the party and what make them feel awkward and whatnot. Maybe they'll change the protocols of security and shit. Maybe they'll have um, safety awareness people with fucking bibs on walking around and shit so people do go the extra step to kind of make sure that they can kind of use the space as a space but they have their own people right i'm sure that kind of happens but i just think sometimes the 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 mechanics of a club and the culture of a club are just what they are there's just not really much you can do sometimes as a promoter it is kind of plug and play and i'm saying this as being a former promoter myself i know how it is sometimes it's just you know it just is what it is you can't there's only so much you can do if anything the most you can do is just basically cultivate your community and make sure the people that you invite to your parties or the, the community you cultivate over the years are just the right type of people and they're the ones that sort of dictate the mood and the vibe and again like i said in a country like the uk and a city like london where door picking is really kind of frowned upon and people take it very people don't take it the right way in terms of how it's you know the function of it i just think you're always going to end up in a situation um, another one says e1 has no real culture of its own i agree with this one as a kind of a pseudo permanent space where studio spaces was and redone it's extremely variable depending on the night and on the promoter i can't say i'd imagine people would call themselves e1 regulars exactly and more grab is kind of well for the kids as they say pity you had to bad night but like others have looked to promoters and chalk it up as bad promoters yeah that's a problem because e1 doesn't really have its own culture its own little scene maybe that's what fold did a really good job of with unfold 
unfold and I don't think it's even unfolding. I just think the fact that they supported a lot of like grassroots promoters, it kind of helped them sort of cultivate a community around them. And obviously a lot of the stuff that they do, you know, in terms of um I forgot the night they have where they kind of have all the resident DJs playing there and stuff. That kind of helps it. But the main thing I think is that the people that they're booking to play there, I think there was one particular night that I went to where a lot of people had a bad time at Fold. I forgot who was playing. I'm gonna say it was like let's say some of these house guys coming up like christian a b and shit right and a lot of people really didn't have a good time i remember seeing some of the reviews online about it and people didn't like the vibe and mostly had to do with the fact that it was like mostly a tech house crowd and again that wasn't that wasn't fold's fault but that's when you can see the difference i think it might be like a toy toy event so it depends on the crowd right like it depends on the crowd it depends on the promoter really um who they bring along and i guess as you as a raver you have to be a little bit aware of that like if you go and you know if you go see i forgot who the guy is but there's a lot of kind of kids out and there's i've got the group what they called again i think it's i forgot what the group is but there's a particular type of people that you'll see even like a cobalt seal and stuff they will attract a certain type of crowd and you have to be okay with those people attending those parties and being in your space because they're fans also but they might kind of you know kill your mood and your vibe but there's not much the club can do about it because it's mostly the fans of the dj and again it must be really hard as a dj because you can't really choose your fans either because you know they're just your fans they come along when they come along so you kind of have to make it work in that regard um another one says so at e1 could nice be good depending on the promoters or it's such a not good place um i would say in my personal opinion it's just a really random place i wouldn't say it's good or bad that's why it's probably better than, fa than fabric because fabric i think overall is just a bit of a shit club in my personal opinion it's just not the best place to go to now i would rather spend my 30 pound because again the ticket price of fabric is no joke so you have to commit a lot of money there you probably have to get an uber back like you know the drink prices are crazy you get them any shitty plastic cups i just i don't know i just know the toilets you have to always have be wary because there's security banging on it as well so you can't really get on it in peace so it's fucking annoying so for me all those things are too much of a vibe killer and things to think about for me to go there and spend my money so i'd rather go somewhere else the thing with e1 that they are okay with like i said it's mostly they don't have a regular crowd there so it's not always shit but it's mostly the promoters and the crowd that they bring no, it's mostly the promoters who they who they book and the crowd that that dj brings is going to dictate the night but again the issue is that for ebon is like the better version of fabric and also the easier club to get into compared to fold so most people will go to e1 just because it's less of a hassle do you know what i mean in that regard um another one says i've been a few times before and it's been nowhere near as busy blame the promoter yeah true but again like i said when it's not busy it's also not the best place to be at because the sound sort of spreads and it's kind of a weird vibe i've been there twice already overbooked and the smoking area is fucking shit as again like i said i think it's horrendous bro the only way i can smoke any one is to hop on those concrete platers it's so fucking hot inside that you need fresh air every 45 minutes exactly what a fucking shit show and again it's not you don't really you know this air condition doesn't exist in the uk overall you know what i mean sometimes you'd go to a fucking pret a manger and there's not gonna be fucking air conditioning in there it's not something you're going to be labeling only at fucking e1 but at least have one working you know like i said i think fold have two working i think they have maybe three or four but they have two main ones one at the front and one near the back so if you want to get some fresh air, you can just stand underneath there quickly and then dive back into the fucking mosh pit get back in the middle of the crowd and fucking go crazy you don't need to keep going outside because i think going outside is of, of course do it get your breather but it can kind of ruin the mood and ruin your kind of vibe and shit you don't need to always be popping out outside every single minute you can just chill inside for a bit so that's a bit annoying another one says sounds pretty unprofessional things can get ugly between people and on a space to move around exactly the main um, concourse corridor was relatively small and it was potentially a couple of hundred people jesus christ it's always full in there don't get me wrong for the clerk room because i think if i'm not mistaken as you come into as you you know walk up to e1 there's a long barricade that you have to kind of queue around right that kind of feels like you're going through fucking you know the immigration thing at an airport which is annoying you get you obviously show your id you take a picture on there like again like you can go to visit a relative in fucking prison then you walk to security guards there's a table there you do all your stuff in the pot they fucking scan everything they do the fucking metal detector make sure you ain't got a strap or a fucking knife or whatever and then obviously the search will you pad you down if you're black like me they might look into your hair and shit right and your socks maybe take you after you take off your fucking shoes <laughs> and then when you get past the security then there's a cloaking room before you get in and the cloakroom's got a big queue as well so which is a weird way to place to put a cloakroom on the outside but whatever <clears throat> so there's a cloakroom on the outside you can put your cloakroom there your stuff in there for i think two pound whatever it may be and then you obviously go a bit further and that's where the doors to go in are but the doors to go in are really small it's kind of narrow it's a weird door it's like heavy it's a strange thing when you go there you know what i mean so if it's busy it's really odd because everyone's coming in and out because it's hot 
and then you have to go in and you know, it's, it's just a weird vibe and then of course going in um then you start to realize the club is a bit shit and if anything the toilets are decent they don't really you know bother you in there um there's a guy in there selling fucking lollipops and shit it's always fucking annoying but whatever get your money king and then of course the main room is all decent enough second room all right maybe this maybe i prefer the second room to the first room to be fair the second room is more of a darker feel about it the dj booth is like really high up it's kind of dark as well so you can't really see them really too tough and it really feels cool because it's sort of like you can dance without people kind of giving a fuck because everyone you can't really see the djs there's all about smoke and lights everywhere you can kind of really get into the mood of things if anything the main room is a little bit too much like you know jesus you know hands out wide like fucking jesus type of thing right but the second room is maybe it's a bit more of a vibe but again it's just the drink prices are crazy the crowd's a bit too random and it's just not for me people are saying to report it to the H H S C. Jesus Christ is a bit much and that also sounds horrific haven't been to E1 but I will give it a miss in the future if you're looking for a good club experience in London my only positive things to say about it is Phonox door staff sound system crowd vibe are all been good every time I've been there and I love the I love the known flows on the dance floor okay is that, I didn't you know that Phonox have a no phones on the dance floor rule same with Fold isn't it a coincidence that the only clubs that are decent in London or the only night night you know club nights right think about the one I went to recently Hotbox and shit the only club nights in London that are actually decent are the ones that the promoters go to some lengths to really control the environment like Hotbox has door picking you have to get a membership you have to have a membership to buy tickets the links aren't readily available um, Adonis is the same thing right even though I didn't really have the best of time still they cover your phone sticker and they cover your phone lens no stick no fo pictures on the dance floor and they really police that really tightly fold they hand out stickers on, in the queue whilst you're in before you get in no no videos or whatever it may be like it's no surprise that the ones that actually take an extra step to cultivate their environment guess what have better atmospheres and ambiance in the clubs who would have guessed it who would have guessed it um what was people saying fun on you Phonox used to be fab but clapham crowd expanded more into brixton and you get a lot of preppy posh kids again that's not an issue that's standard london i think they can get around that so i wouldn't really use that as a as a slight Phonox isn't like a techno yeah, Phonox is maybe a bit more housey, but still, good recommendation. It was definitely the busiest I've seen it, absolutely full of students. Room one was packed out. And again, maybe this looks, it's not really the fault of the club. Maybe it's just because, maybe this is a bit of a unique situation because he went to see Morgrab, right? And Morgrab, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he like Australian or something, right? And he's incredibly popular with the kids. Morgrab, have, people, kids have been liking Morgrab since he's burst onto the scene. Maybe it's because of his, again, I don't know much about his come up. Maybe it's because of his part of his story. Maybe part of his story was that he was a student making beats in his fucking dorms or something. I don't know what it is, but kids love more grab. So maybe it's just a specific thing, a specific thing with him. I think of the same thing as like, um, who's that Houlihan kid, right? I think he's Irish or something. He's got a really big crowd or fan base of kids as well. So maybe it's mostly the kids thing. So, you know, you can't really blame the DJ about it. You have your fans or your fans, but um, that might be the reason. And one says room one was packed out, completely draining two people, um, ending up seeing clouds an entire night in clouds the entire night the best but they finished half an hour early um in one of the busiest rooms i had seen in the in a time in the morning huge shame asked the attendant why they were shutting down and he said don't know but someone had taken a shit on the floor <laughs> someone took a shit on the floor that's why they had to close it is that true that's hilarious so it was so busy in that club the cubicles were probably packed with people getting on it taking shits finger banging each other that somebody was like you know what i'm taking a shit on the floor and it locked off the entire rave. My mates who stayed behind said they spent the night too in a room too because there's no point going in the other room. Sounds like they managed to make something of the night, but I still wouldn't have stayed. Exactly pretty much the same solution. Everyone raves about E1, but it's dog shit. <laughs> this person's really laying it down. I've been up, I've been abused by security. The complaint about that, it got ignored. It's poorly managed. Welfare is bad. I don't know how anyone comes away with a good experience there. I don't know why parties like KV, um, exactly, um, what you call it? What was I going to say? What's KV again? Um... Oh, I forgot. I just said the name a minute ago, didn't I? KV. Club Verboten, right? I think that's what they mean. Club Verboten. That's happening soon, is it? Did I just say Club Verboten's happening soon? Let's go back. I should see E1, that fucking thing. I think Club Verboten. And again, Club Verboten are very... Didn't Club Verboten have an issue? What clubs have the issue with? That's why they have to move to Berlin. It's quite surprising that they're actually going to E1. Because again, like, like, like people are saying, but maybe the issue is, if you're Club Verboten at a certain point, because they're really big and i guess now with them um, what's that thing crossbreed have gone that hubbard king party they've got cancelled because their founder was you know accused of being a bit of a creep so they got they went under which is unfortunate really it would have been kind of nice if he just would maybe stepped aside and the people would have continued on with it but maybe the brand was ruined too much in the community who knows but now that crossbreed is gone 
Club Verboten is really the only sort of like kink sex positive party that I know of. And obviously they're really popular. They've been really doing big things, you know, for the majority of time. And now they've kind of expanded over to Berlin. So maybe they have such a big fan base. You can't really have it in like smaller clubs because you're not going to be able to, you know, service your fans and your customers and your clients, whatever the community. So you want to have it in a bigger space. And the thing with E1, even though it's a shit club, and you know maybe sort of manage the best way maybe they're also kind of hands off they give promoters the license to do what they want and then obviously it can have a negative or positive effect so that might be the reason why clever boats are not going there because they get a space that's big that can you know cater and kind of you know service everybody and get lots of people in um they obviously can book loads of big djs as well that kind of expand there um they can cultivate what they want on the inside they're going to change it they're going to have dark rooms all this other good shit and shit they're going to maybe cover people's phone lenses and stuff they're going to have their own security all this good stuff but you know, that's the issue with having a shit club. Like, even if they do their own thing inside, people are just not going to have a big fan of it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like a multi-sex and, you know, that promote, that, that party series has been blowing up over in Berlin. They do their raves at Watergate and people say Watergate is essentially like fabric, essentially, right? In terms of the crowd and the people that go there, it's very commercial in some sense. Obviously, it's a legendary club, but that Trezor, the f- you know the crowd can be a little bit hit and miss and it can kind of affect your night out so if your night like multi-sex what do you do do you have your party in a dingy rave somewhere even because if i might think multi-sex they kind of want to be a bit more sexy a little bit more fashionable a little bit more you know a little bit more of a fun good time in that respect so having it at watergate overlooking the fucking river and stuff right at that amazing venue and whatnot is a great place to be and obviously it's location but then the issue is that a lot of people have bad feelings or sentiment around the actual club altogether itself so it kind of hampers your ability to kind of attract a good crowd because some people are like you know what i don't care what rave is happening at watergate i'm not going so that's the kind of issue but in london the main issue is that we just don't have a lot of options like it really isn't a lot of options that like you go from doing parties at small under 500 capacity venues then maybe 500 to 750 then it's like a thousand plus you know what i mean there's nothing else around and then like maybe one or two clubs that do good stuff so i can understand why club Burton are taking that risk um whatever uh another one says here i go to club Burton a lot and it's always excellent but i don't but i put that down to the promoters um the staff are always respectful and kv don't oversell not like the described in the post though the toilet queues can be long and the corridor does get a little crowded at times the staff are so rude another person says yeah except for the bar staff who are usually lovely yeah the staff i mean i think they mean mostly the security the security are on and again i don't blame them too much as well it's not their fault bro like imagine the amount of punters that they must see on a daily basis from like the more grab crew from like the dm the drum like look just look at the lineups that are happening like imagine the different crowd crowds the different energies of people that are going to be attending teletech fans mix mac fans i hate model fans labyrinth fans club of boton fan hetero Oak fans you know at six fans all that's just too that's like, just too much that's why door picking is essential um the staff are rude this is here i had yet one yell at me for sitting at the end of the smoke area where another member of staff said it would be okay as i was feeling rough i f- it, it really feels like a run by a club run by gangsters <laughs> <laughs> hilarious hilarious because if i'm not mistaken it kind of reminds me of that old story of fold in it one of the founders of fold got did he get arrested or the stuff got i think their equipment got you know confiscated for a period of time because if i'm not mistaken again i, I get the hustle the founders of fold got involved with some dark web crypto guy and that's how they bought their equipment or something that's how they bought all the cdjs and shit in the club which is horrendous you know you'd imagine you'd think pioneer would have some sort of system or some sort of program for clubs where you can maybe buy equipment on layaway or something in it because you know fucking folds a fucking institution now in london it's definitely one of the best clubs here so you'd imagine you have something in in you know in hand to kind of help clubs coming up but i guess not i guess if you you just if you if you if you want cdjs and a dgm mixer you just have to buy it yourself so obviously those things are like you know fucking thousands of pounds right the, especially the highest one that you want to get for a club you probably have to spend like 10 grand or something so you know just fixing up the club sounds system it's just too much so they dipped into the fucking illegal shit and i think they got the stuff complicated so i think that's just a fundamental part of nightlife and clubs club scenes i think people would be surprised about some of the dodgy backgrounds of some of our favorite clubs it's just what it is isn't it because it just takes so much to kind of start it off 
I guess, because I think a lot of the initial costs around a club are probably incredibly high. So, yeah, it reminds me of that. But, yeah, that's incredible. It feels like it's run by gangsters. <laughs> Compared to Folders night and day. Like I said, you know, if you, yeah, you know, hey, um, a person from London who's been in a group mentioned Fold as well as Phonics, I think. Um, yeah, I basically had the same experience, someone says. Oh, imagine. Yeah, Etap Kaya and Dara Kolosova. Great artists and sound system and lights, but just ridiculous amount of people sold tickets and you could barely dance or interact with people normally. It feels like the promoters only concerns maximizing profits and tickets. Again, don't concern with the pro. It's mostly the club. The club is fucking shit. The promoters are put on the nights and want to book good DJs. It is what it is. The fans are going to be there. But again, all this overselling stuff isn't the promoters. It's mostly the club being absolute cunts about things. Unless you get the handle on the ticket. I don't know how they do the ticket sales and how that happens and splits and shit. But I think it's mostly have to do with the fucking club itself. Another one here. Totally agree. I went to uh, Mafame around a year ago. Aside from the promoters getting greedy and overbooking, the venue E1 also not made for big crowds with low ceilings. It's a it's a visual screen feature which looks so cool on their socials. It's a complete scam since only one fifty people can stand under it. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Traffic control is also on another level of stupidity with so many different small rooms and corridors as well as tight doorways to move around. Such a shame it turned out that way. But it's a difference between a mediocre club like E1 and a proper one like Fabric. Come on, bro. Allow it. How can you say you you hate E1 but you like Fabric? Some people's choices in clubs just always surprises me. Like that's insane. They're basically on the same level, honestly. If anything, E1's probably worse because they they've got an easier sort of layout to kind of get it right. Fabric has a lot of fucking you know history attached to it and shit. They've got the location, which is an issue because it just attracts a weird kind of you know group of people that go there. Come on, man. E1 is ass. A normie club posing as underground, exactly. Pretty unprofessional is an understatement, exactly. I had an experience where before Halloween, the event years ago run by Percolate, they overbooked um, and are incompetent. I saw people getting stretched out by paramedics <laughs> at Halloween. <laughs> Imagine leaving a club in a fucking ambulance in E1 of all places. As you're leaving in the ambulance, all you hear is tss from all the guys outside selling balloons and shit hilarious the place should be shut down or they should at least ban those promoters oh my god i reckon i've been to e1 around 10 times it's highly variable had some brilliant nights and some shit ones the more popular headliner is the worst the event i agree usually from a combo of overcrowding plus much more mainstream audience if the interested on ra is pushing 1k a week or two before it will get rammed inside i'm still go back as both rooms can have good sound system and layouts room two is really under exactly see yes, i do room two is definitely the one of e1 it's dark They've got a really cool platform. The bars, at the, it's like a nice layout. The bars at the back, it's kind of close. So you can get to it. Um, and you can't really see the DJ. It's like this massive black wall. And DJs are at the top. They can't really even see. Honestly, you, can't, you can barely see them. It's fucking incredible. The smoke anywhere. So you just can focus on the dancing and get on it and shit. So I love that. Um, also, if you want to get on it easily, I think room two is probably the best place to go because no one can see you there. And there's less security walking around on the dance floor with their fucking flashlights and shit. Also, most five star mention a member of staff's name. That's because they have people giving free drink tickets inside exchange for a review. Oh, okay. I did that too, to be honest, although I got 40 quids worth of tokens for it wow they've got a fucking hustle where they get people to do reviews and they give them free drink tokens jesus christ bro okay so i'm on one side of things right where i'm on here fucking you know giving my unfiltered opinion on some of these places which probably isn't a good thing because especially if i'm an upcoming dj it's gonna really affect my ability to get booked to these places and maybe if i ever wanted to have guest lists which i'd never asked for to be fair it'll definitely you know they're definitely gonna be like get fucked i understand that but the opposite side of things is horrible isn't it? they're doing these fucking paid for reviews this is horrendous man the shilling is fucking crazy again like i said my honest opinion e1 is mostly because of the management there are the ones that are running it like shit it's not to do with the promoters i wouldn't blame them for overselling tickets i wouldn't blame them for the security being shit they're not being air conditioning the crowd management being shitty it's not the promoter's fault it's mostly the club the club should be able to deal with that more so when you're a promoter and you do a night at e1 it's mostly a plug and play thing that's why you go there because they have everything kind of set up for you you can basically tweak some things here and there but it's that other stuff is mostly based on the fucking um you know people there and if anything it's weird too because they have so many people working there like even just the fucking cloakroom there's like six people working in the cloakroom it's like how many people do you need to work a cloakroom they have enough staff there 
They're probably over fucking staffed, yet they don't know how to run the club properly. It's fucking odd. And again, room two is the best room. And it continues. Can confirm the stay of you once on see alarming. Went there for the first time in the summer to see him. Um, Marlon Hofstad. And I will never go. Again, these people are so bait, innit? Like, this guy's the one that's got like crazy amount of views on fucking Boydum, and I've never fucking heard of him. So I'm assuming he's really popular, like with the normie crowd. So he's probably going to have a norm. I mean, it's kind of the, the, the DJ attracts a crowd and whatever. So it kind of is what it is. And again, no door picking. So many people that initially couldn't move. Really rude and laddie crowd. Ventilation is non-existent. Like literally so bad. I've never sweat so much in my life. Exactly. <laughs> Trying to access the smoking area was impossible because there was just so many people and we needed the air quite frequently because it was so hot. Also, they didn't have free water at the sidebar, which to me is always a sign that the club doesn't care about the people. Yeah, true. The free water is at the one at the entrance, isn't it? So you have to always leave. That's the thing. It's so weird. You have to always leave the dance floor always to get fresh air um to get even a drink to have a bump or if you have to leave dance for you can't just like be there which is odd it's very very strange um i also refused i was also refused water they wanted me to buy a fucking can for six pounds the other room was also empty and playing some kind of trap music i don't know yeah if anything techno people or people that like dance music the, the one thing they hate is fucking rap <laughs> <laughs> just why horrible experience i'll never go back another one same than print works i'm not going exactly I, I, i'm gonna stand on it print works is one of the worst clubs in london i don't care what anyone says great fucking venue to look at you know visually and shit but as a nightclub it's fucking shit the hype around print works is fucking it just shows you how low our standards are you know what i mean we've got so many shit clubs here people are looking at print works like it was fucking trezor it's not even that it's fucking shit I'm glad it's gone to be fair. Me and a mate did Friday at E1 for a more grab and then the cause on Saturday. Night and day difference in the experience. Exactly. Big up the cause. They, they deserve a bit of love as well, actually. Um, the second time I've been to both, E1 seems like a complete cash grab, especially the bar and the overcrowding was ridiculous. Still managed to have a brilliant time, although most um although the cause was phenomenal this weekend. Heading back to E1. <laughs> See what I mean? This guy had a horrible time, right? He went to cause, had the best time, but he's still going back to E1. Why? Because they have some of the best lineups. So that's what they did really well. They said, you know what? Fuck the safety. Fuck the experience of the fans and the fucking punters. Fuck doing it for the scene or for the culture or whatever. We're going to have a space where we book all the big and most popular bait, you know, trendy, well-supported, well-followed DJs on social. We're going to get them all packed into this fucking club, stack as many as we can on the lineups, and then just sell unlimited amount of tickets. Who's going to tell us no? Who's going to tell us no? And so far, no one's telling them no because they're fucking killing it. Look at this lineup here with Hector Oaks. Hector Oaks, Patrick Mason, Ka Ka Carmen Electro, Tara Erizo, The Next Room, Donna, Nanzen Yang, and Samantha Togni from Booty Club. Like, come on, bro. That's going to be that's gonna be Ram Jammo. You already know it. Well, go on. I already know well, go on. Hope you had a good time. I don't feel I'll go back again after, especially judging by others, what they said. Um, the I Hate Model ones will likely be rammed as a main room. Exactly. Somewhat frequent to, for vault events as people often put um, in room two are nowhere near as popular as room one and E1 security never bother managing capacity. Exactly. I, that's always surprised me, isn't it, when promoters do that. They'll, they'll stack the first room and then have the room two just be all their mates. It's like, bro, split the, split the crowd a bit. Give your mates a chance to play in front of a decent crowd also. Put some main guys in room two. Like, you know, mix it up a little bit. Don't just stack the, the first room of all the fucking killers. That fucking kills it. And then you have all your mates playing for like two people. They walk in and walk out. That's fucking so demoralizing as a DJ. Seeing people just walk in and walk out all the time because they know that you're not the big DJ and they want to go to the other room. I like Vault's bookings and chatted to one of the guys that runs it on the smoking area and they seem like good promoters in it for the right reasons i just think e1 need to stop late 9 percent of the case of the multi-event when ram ram in one room cramming room so um are there any good clubs left in london some fretted um not all happened to mot i've tried it i've rated it in the past okay mot uh, i'm a big fan of it to be fair second I went to mot once okay people are not liking mot to see parfait and charlie spot but again look at the see Whenever they say they had a bad time in a club, just look at the DJs they're talking about. Parfait and Charlie Sparks. These are this is gonna, it's gonna attract a crowd of people that most people who aren't Gen Zs are not gonna like, you know, because they're the younger, they're a little bit more sprightly, they're on it a little bit more, they're a little bit chaos energy and shit. So it makes sense we're having a good time. So this person said about venue MOT. I went to MOT once to see Parfait and Charlie Sparks, and though the venue was shit horrible toilet situation the floor was slippery at the front and sticky at the back <laughs> the smoking area looks like chicken like a chicken coop so many young people off their tits on drugs one guy was being racist to an asian couple and we all had to kick him out and, and ourselves because security personnel was non-existent 
Jesus Christos. Yep, was there on Friday. Cloakroom was full, literally from the front till the entrance. So more grabs room blocked up. Ended up going to the next room. Had a mega time listening to Clouds and then went back to Tommy Hope for Tommy Hulahan. I'm um, seriously though, it was oversold as fuck. This is my first bad experience at E1 out. Three times being there. Get another two. Got another two events books. You want to have that ability in it. Everyone's saying bad. I'm going to be there again next week. <laughs> so maybe that's what we have to do. We have to just stomach it. Like we have to put up with you one because unlike fabric, they're not that bad where you're not like, going to run away, run away. Cause the book is just too good. Like then no one else is booking those people with that kind of lineup. Anyway, I didn't rate E1 as a venue, zero chill space. The one time I made it for an hour round trip to E1 to see Panport, the main toilets were broke. Security guard were extremely rude, shouting on our faces. The main bar and into, into the dance floor was a few inches from water, sewage, who knows what. Gross men were being asked to pee into... No. No way. Men were being asked to pee into huge bins. The, when was this? <laughs> what? Quite a few years ago, 2019 people were peeing in bins <laughs> yo the people that run E1 are definitely gangsters man um, nobody seemed to know what was going on we didn't even manage to get a drink um, having only seen a little Fiac again Fiac um, Parfait Charlie Spa all these people they're gonna attract you know the hooligan the hooligan kid um, I never bother going back great to hear people are stating the recognize the brilliance of more grab what a unique talent they are nobody mixes hardcore jungle and techno the same way I would be choked to arrive at that fuckery um, you want is conceptually so cool sadly it's, dedic it's, dedic it's dictated by promoters last time I went there it was a more grab 2519 was a shit because of that I've seen more grab twice in this country in it just attracts a shit crowd exactly it's just a crowd doesn't matter if it, even if more grab did an event at fold it'll still be shit personally it's just his crowd unfortunately and again it's not his fault you know you just get that level of popularity you just you know you attract a normal crowd there's no door picking or door selection at the venue you're you're playing at it's a recipe for disaster i think hector oaks is probably it's probably hector oaks is probably the next one is probably going to have that problem he's probably at that level now where of popularity where he's just going to attract a shitty crowd and again not his fault because i think he's a fucking sick dj um, and a really good producer also that was very sad looking forward to friday because i'm finally going to make my techno event the first time in my life but now i don't know how i should go or not i was there last thursday saturday sorry this person says for the rod had event and it was a great experience so exactly but rod had has a good crowd rod had has a crowd of actual heads so i'm not surprised that was good and it wasn't overcrowded the music was so good this friday vault event worth to go that's a shame e1's always like this never heard a good thing about it so yeah um e1's getting absolutely pelters all over the place but like i said i think it's just gonna run things you have to stomach and put up with because it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon the only place in london that books the people that they book to the level that they book them at um the only one close is probably fold and maybe e1 or maybe fold or maybe venue mot or maybe even what's next one that's good, good that does it maybe night tales but i think you know fold and e1 definitely at the top when it comes to booking the people that everyone wants to kind of see from the Euro bigger european acts international acts and shit so it's one of the places where if anything just be aware of the people that you're going to go see and i think the crowd would i think if anything you'll have a good idea on what the crowd's going to be like based on the live streams if some of the you're looking to put you're looking to see especially if you see that a boiler room set from them or whatnot or an ra set or whatever you'll be able to gauge the kind of crowd you'll see at e1 based on the people that you see in attendance at the actual events it's not that hard to kind of be able to see who's who to be fair i think so but again maybe i'm in the wrong there but yeah big up e1 and funny enough i actually might be there <laughs> for that fucking uh, <laughs> hell in the health event on the first so i'm saying all this shit i'm talking all this crap but most likely this event here on the fucking first somehow or the other i might have to fucking get there as well to see fucking hell in the health playing in it on the first of january it's absolutely stacked there right now dax j dax j i'm not really too um interested in seeing anymore because i think he's kind of fallen off personally um maron obviously is fucking sick devious one big fan of um Blash and Alex, I heard of really good stuff about them too. Um they're always kind of getting a lot of fucking love and a few others are on the list. But yeah, those tickets are still available as you can see there for the release and time entry. Um Monday seven, Tuesday till seven, like fucking good rave. So yeah, you know, E1, E1 is what it is, isn't it? 